Welcome to Tabletop Misfits to another Tearing It Up. My name's Anthony. This is an unboxing of Magic the Gathering Innistrad Crimson Val, the commander decks that came out recently for the Crimson Val set. This one I was particularly excited about. This is the Vampire pre-constructed deck. It has a new legendary creature on it. Stefan, the Mora Progenitor. So as everybody knows, vampires are a big thing in Magic the Gathering. The previous commander that was super popular with, with, uh, with vampires was Edgar. He's kind of still the, probably one of the best that you can use for, for vampires in general. Um, however, I'm curious to see how, what Stefan brings to the table um, because frankly, you know, everybody's getting bored of seeing uh, Edgar at this point. So we'll take a look, we'll unbox this, go through the cards a little bit, see if there's anything super cool in there that might, you know, add a bit of spice to maybe using a different commander or maybe to vampires in general. Big thanks again to Cool Comics and Games for setting us up with this. Uh, this is awesome. And again, that place is awesome if you're a geek. Go ahead and head there. They got pinball machines, they got comics, they got obviously Magic the Gathering, they got anything you can think of there in Cape Coral. So go ahead and take a look and uh, check them out. And thanks again, Tom Lotz. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the box. <clears throat> obviously, a standard commander box I've been using for a while. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Basically, it gives you the general gist. Stefan Mora Progenitor is the progenitor of the Moran lineage of vampires and the Lord of Stancia's Outland Valleys. I personally like the zombie lumberjack story on one of the prior commanders the best. Yeah, it's going to be hard to beat that, honestly. But we'll crack this open and take a look. All right. So as usual, you open these things from the bottom. I think one of them I tried to open from the top before. Never do that. <laughs> Always open it from the bottom. It's a lot of extra cardboard in here. Basically, you have your face card, which is just kind of really glossy, but it's printed on the, uh, on the cardboard. And you have your random tokens, which, as I always say, may use these punch outs as confetti uh, or as counters. I mean, they're cute, but a little bit of do, right? Now we get to the actual meat and potatoes here. We got the deck box. <clears throat> and the actual deck. Now, the, in the, like most of these, there isn't really a whole lot of spiffs. You get your life counter this year. It's a, it's a bat, kind of cool looking, and just the uh, the commander symbol on the other side. <clears throat> Got our little, uh, I guess poster. Yeah, poster. Uh, Stefan, and like I was saying, he's a progenitor of the more more line. Um, for anybody that enjoys the lore, you can probably check it out on their site. But uh, it's nothing terribly exciting. Just basically, he uh, <clears throat> he's hanging out with Edgar and Olivia and all those guys. He's kind of a minor vampire lord. He sadly is not a lumberjack like the last guy. I'm gonna fold this on up and take a look at the actual deck. Ugh, I'm really bad at folding these things. Woo! Stephen Demon's taking a break tonight. He only comes out for draft unboxings and things like that because these are preset for those that don't know these have a predetermined set of cards they're kind of all really built probably obvious for a lot of people but in case you're new to magic this is just going to be the same in every box all right so let's start out with the fun here we got stefan more progenitor i'll go over just a couple of the cards in this set that are kind of new that i really like this is really glossy so i hope you guys are getting this but um this is uh Stefan Moore, progenitor. He's a uh, two colorless, a black and a red. So we're cutting out white out of the out of the vampire list here. Um, flying at the beginning of your end step, create a blood token for each player who lost life this turn. So anytime you hit somebody, you're gonna get blood tokens. Um, whenever Stefan attacks, you may uh, sacrifice two blood tokens. If you do, you may put a vampire card from your hand onto the battlefield, tap then attacking against indestructible intent and a turn. That's really good. So in the new set, they introduced this uh, blood token mechanic where. You pay one, you sack the blood token, and you discard a card, draw a card. So it's really good to kind of keep your deck going. Um, but they use them in other ways too, and this is basically just getting free vampires on the table. That's really nice, actually. So pretty cool. I don't like the fact he doesn't have white. I was kind of hoping he would, but um, if you want to go black red, you can go madness with that and do a bunch of other uh, fun with that without needing the white necessarily. Um, Timothar, Baron of Bats, here's another new one. He's four colorless, two black. Uh, ward discard a card, so if somebody tries to target him, they have to discard a card, which is nice. Whenever another town token vampire control dies, you may pay one and exile it. If you do create a 1-1 one -one bat creature token with flying, it gains when this creature deals damage to a player, sacrifice it and return the exile card to the battlefield tap. That's kind of interesting. It gives you a, a second shot to save your vampires, um, and if the bat survives or gets through to do damage, which in commander that can be easy because you might have somebody who doesn't have flyers to block or just nothing on the field. You can sack it and you bring your vampire right back. That's actually really, really cool. I dig this guy. He's really, really nice. So these are two optional guys that are, are two new guys that were added to the, to the set. Uh, now we'll get to the uncommons. Um, these are um, not as exciting, but they do have some interesting effects. 
I won't go over I won't go over all of them because these are the uncommons after all. I do like this guy though. He creates a blood token when he comes in, and when you can sack him, target creature gets negative negative X, where X is twice the number of blood tokens you control. Like I said, they're going heavy on the blood token thing. And he's a good way to basically sack something and get rid of somebody who's even indestructible because they get negative X, negative X, and you're going to have a lot of blood tokens. So, you know, you could take out an Eldrazi or something with him probably if you get enough. Uh, a lot of typical stuff. Um, you draw three cards and lose some life. Uh, blood Artist, kind of a staple for these decks. Um, you know, when he dies or another creature dies, target player loses a life and you gain one life. Definitely, definitely a uh, staple in a lot of decks. Um, some more uncommons. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'll go over some of the highlights of them. Uh, let's see what we got here. Falconrath Noble. Um, when Falconrath Noble or another creature dies, target player loses life and you gain one life. So basically the same thing as a Blood Artist, just with flying and more expensive. So uh, that's interesting. You're definitely going to be doing a lot of those effects. Aristocrat effects, as they're called. Um, this one, when it enters, uh, it's a Bloodline Necromancer, costs five. Lifelink, when it enters the battlefield, you may return target Vampire Wizard, creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So they got a lot of recursion effects, a lot of damaging effects. I'll skip by some of the stuff we see reprints in here. You got some solid stuff. Vampire Nighthawk, that's another solid card. And then we got our red cards, Rakish Air. Um, Going to give counters to our vampires, which a lot of the red stuff does. When they do damage, they'll get counters for it. That's kind of cool. Also, we got a little bit of madness mechanics in the deck as well, since we're using red. Vandal Blast, always a staple reprint. Destroy target artifact you don't control. You can overload it to blow up all the artifacts on the field that you don't control. Very, very good card. Rakdos Charm, kind of a jack of all trades. Great card right there. Exile a card, destroy artifact, or each creature deals one damage to its controller. Just a general good card. Um, uh, a Anthem effect on a vampire to you know give them all plus one, plus one on first strike. We'll go through those real quick because... We've seen their kind before, but they're very good to have and almost stable for vampire decks. We got Arcane Cygnus. Thankfully, they're reprinting that in most of the commander decks now because that's kind of a needed um, charcoal diamond, commander spear, fire diamond. I'm not a big fan of the diamonds. They're just basically mana rocks for cheap. Then you have your Cygnets, which I am a big fan of. And of course, the ever loving Soul Ring and every single commander deck ever. And Swiftfoot Boots and or the Lightning Greaves. I really hope they get back to reprinting the Lightning Greaves again. They've been putting Swiftfoot Boots instead, which are good. Um, but it would be nice to get the Lightning Greaves because they're only a smidge better, um, in my opinion. They keep your commander safe for those that are wanting to give Hexproof and Haste. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty common uh, addition to most commander decks. And then Unstable Obelisk, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's not bad. It's a mana rock that you can blow up. And then we got our lands here. I'll go through the lands really quick. So we got your command tower, usual sack lands. Let's see if it's any better than our prior ones here. This is a Tainted Peak. Um, it's activate only if you control a swamp. Not a big fan of these lands either, but you should have a swamp out in a two-color deck. So, uh, so far the mana base is okay. Not amazing, but not bad either. Um, let's see what else we got. We got some new, I guess these are, yeah, these are new uh, rares. Um, <coughs> Crossway Troublemakers. Uh, five uh, colorless and black attacking vampires in control of death touch and lifelink whenever a vampire control dies you pay two life if you do draw a card not bad to have gives you some card draw glass cast heart what is this let's see two and three it's an artifact for three Van one or more vampires in control attack you create a blood token so you're going to get a bunch of blood tokens you pay one life you create a one one white and black vampire token with lifelink so it's a it's a vampire token generator and then you can sack it and 13 blood tokens, everybody loses 13 life, and you gain 13 life. I really like that. That's really, really nice. That is that is our standout right there. I like that. You got some new legendaries uh, with partner. Oh, so if you want to do, here's your alternate commanders. I'm sure that the, yeah, here's the other girl. So these two partner with each other. Camber and Loreen, they're new to this uh, to this deck. So um, here's Loreen. She partners with the other guy. She's a 3-3 human rogue. First strike, sacrifice an artifact or creature. You go target creature if you want to go that route. But she partners with him. He's a four cost, uh, one black, three colorless. Lifelink, three, four vampire. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, you gain one life and create a blood token. So that's kind of cool. You can use these as alternate commanders instead of using Strafan. Um, not bad. Uh, definitely, definitely a different way to play the deck. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be better than Strafan, but definitely different. Um, this is... Uh, <laughs> This is a board white basically for vampires. Cost five, each non-vampire gets negative negative X, where X is the number of vampires you control. Yeah, have a nice day with that. Livia's very wrathful. So that's a board wipe and keeps your vampires on the field, kind of similar to some of the other 
tribal board types we've seen. This is a big card, uh, Predator's Hour. I think it goes for a little bit of money too. Uh, black and uh, colorless. So under turn creatures you control gain menace and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library face down. You may look at that and play that card for as long as it remains exiled and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color it casts that spell. That's, that's, that's really cool. Sad it's a sorcery because it'd be broken if it was an enchantment, but that's actually kind of a cool card. So it gives a menace, which is very helpful. It's a good way to maybe, you know, win a game that way. Plus, you get to cast stuff for free. Uh, Shadow Grange Archfiend. Uh, when this enters the battlefield, each opponent sac sacks a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. You gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures sacrificed this way. That's interesting, and it's got madness. He's also an 8-4, which is gross. Um, let's see. We got a bunch of other rares here. Let's go try to pick out some highlights among this. They got some great reprints in this, Anawan the Ruin Sage. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, each player sacrifices a non-vampire creature. Goes in every single vampire deck. He's gross. We got Blood Tracker. Butcher Malak here. That's a good one. Whenever Butcher Malak here, another creature you control dies. Each opponent sacks a creature. Definitely a solid reprint. Champion of Dusk. When you enter the battlefield, you draw X cards and you lose X life where X is the number of vampires you control for five. Definitely another great reprint. Cordial Vampire. Uh, when he or another creature dies, put a plus one, plus one counter on each vampire control. Uh, definitely a must in Vampire Ducks. He will buff them really, really fast. Uh, Damnable Pack for card draw. Let's see, a lot of a lot of good stuff in here. Necropolis region, I love this one. Flying, whenever a creature control deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus one, plus one counters on it. So, yeah, your creatures are going to get stupid big really fast. One good, one good swing, and your creatures are going to get huge really fast. And she's six, and a flyer for six, five. So, stupid good card. I've seen this card win games really fast. Um, Arcana Revenant. <clears throat> this is a really good one too, actually. Uh, four, co four colorless and two black. Whenever you tap a swamp for mana, add an additional black, which is amazing. And then she's a four, four on top of that, and she can buff her. One black gives her plus one, plus one. Just a great solid card overall. Patron of the Vein, another great one. So these are some solid vampire reprints. Um, four cost, uh, four colorless, two black. Flyer for 4-4. Four, four. When he enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls. Whenever a creature and opponent controls dies, you exile it and put a plus one, plus one counter on each vampire control. Stupid gross. This guy's a great card in vampire deck. So really, really solid reprints. I was hoping for a few others too, like um, from the old uh, Mar Edgar Markov deck, but uh, obviously they didn't reprint them all. Um, Sanctum Seeker, when a vampire control attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So just, just, just gross stuff overall. I love this. Um, some madness, more madness effects that work with the black. Um, notice Underworld Connections. Huh, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Chant Land. Chant Land has pay one life, draw a card. I can't remember if this is a reprint or not. I don't want to say I, want to say I think it is, but it's a cool card. Especially just paying one life to draw a card. That's pretty good. And what's this? We got some damage. We got a damage card in here, brah. That's random. Hyundai's Ravenger with a madness effect. No! Why is it damaged? That ain't cool. All right. <clears throat> yeah, it's a banged up card in here. What happened there? Anyway, might have to contact Wizards of the Coast about that one. A banged up card. Um, Advances Judgment. Uh, it's a s solid madness card. You pay two. Uh, red, and, red and colorless. It deals two damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. If this madness cost was paid, it deals X damage divided as you choose among those permanents and players. This is basically solid madness, direct damage. And, of course, Blasphemous Act and every red deck to the end of time. Solid board wipe, um, for those that know. Of course, eight colorless, one. It does 13 damage to each creature, but it's one less for each creature on the battlefield. So most of the time, it's like, well, red. And you're going to wipe the board. Um, yeah, Bloodsworn Steward. Bunch of, bunch of solid stuff. This is looking like a solid, solid vampire deck. You have all the standard great vampire effects with some new ones involved as well. I'm going to take a look at a vampire dragon. I haven't seen this guy in a while. I don't know about him. He's not great, but he's not bad. He's, uh, what, eight cost. When a uh, creature dealt damage by him dies, put a counter on him, and he deals, he has like a little uh, shock effect where he can pay and he does one damage to creatures. Not bad. Kind of pricey, though. And then we'll take a look at the land base real quick. Um, or the rest of it, I should say. Um, so Exotic Orchard, solid. Foreboding Ruins, um, if you, reveal, you can reveal a Swamp or Mountain card. It enters the battlefield untapped. I'm not a huge fan of these either, but it's better than definitely just coming to play as tapped. Shadow Blood Ridge, it's a filter land, so you pay one, you get a red and a black. Those are solid, I like those, because it's colorless. 
Um, oh, hey, Smoldering Marsh, that's pretty good. And his battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basic lands. I'm a big fan of these guys, largely because you can fetch them. They have the Swamp Mountain subtype. Very, very, very good card, actually. I'm surprised they have that in there. Temple of Malice um, comes in and scries, uh, tapped, but it scries for one. Very, very, also good land. Temple of False Gods, I can't get rid of these things. I, I'm not a big fan of Temple of False Gods. Uh, unclaimed Territory, Solid Land, you choose a creature type. The land uh, basically taps for any color for that creature type. So in, in this kind of deck, perfect. And then, of course, your basic land. And then lots of blood tokens, lots and lots of blood tokens. And then these new cards they have in here, which are basically thick cardboardy versions of the uh, main face card. I love using these, actually. These are kind of better than the giant cards that they used to have from ages past. So, so far, this deck looks really, really, really good, except for, except for the damage card. It's kind of random. But, um, yeah, actually, this deck looks really good. Standard vampire shenanigans with some new stuff added in obviously they went for a, a black red discard madnessy sub theme with the new blood token mechanics added on they gave you some new cards to actually really kind of empower that a lot more than what would come in the normal set so overall i think this is going to be a lot of fun i'm probably going to use trafon first give him a shot see how it works for a, a commander instead of edgar uh, i'm not a big fan of losing the white out of that because white has a lot of good effects you know, obviously removal largely, um, but we could see if we could make it work. And uh, of course, if need be, you can always bust out Edgar, throw in white and call it a day. But I want to get away from Edgar, and I'm sure a lot of people do if need be to, to get away from that, because pretty much everybody runs them. Um, so yeah, this has been an unboxing video with Tabletop Misfits. I'd say check this deck out. It looks really good and definitely, definitely worth the change. Uh, the value on these cards are actually through the roof compared to, and even outside of just the bulk cards, you're getting a lot of value for 40 bucks. So yeah, definitely if you're into vampires at all, into tribal at all, it's 100% recommend this deck. It looks really, really solid. And even out of the box, it looks like a solid play. It does have a lot of sub themes to it. So I'm not sure until how we, you know, until we get to the table and play with it, how good it is. But otherwise it's a big double thumbs up, double bat up, I guess, maybe. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> anyway, guys, take care. Thanks for joining us on another Tabletop Misfits. Thanks again to Cool Comics and Games for uh, getting this deck out to us. And uh, yeah, keep gaming, guys. Take care.